OccupyWallStreet.net is a website that has been reporting news and analysis of relevance to the Occupy movement. We sat down with Rebecca Mansky, who has played an integral role in the website, and she talked to us about the work that goes into operating the site. When Occupy Wall Street started, um, a lot of media makers came down to the park and they started producing their own media and they generated a lot of media autonomously, which was fantastic, but there was no centralized location for a uh, democratically decided upon uh, content that people would discuss on a team in a transparent, open, inclusive way according to a horizontal consensus-based process which um, the rest of the movement adhered to. So the media arena was, a, was an area in which there was a lot of autonomy, which was fantastic, but it was also a space in which there wasn't, um, there were people speaking for themselves and there was no central consensus-based voice for the movement. So OccupyWallStreet.net aims to be the, not the voice of the movement by any means, but a space in which, which is open to anybody who wants to come and contribute their skills as media makers, um, learn something about creating media, um, and, and generate stories about this movement um, within a consensus-based horizontal process. The people who really, really like spread the word about coming out in the streets um, via Facebook and via various website properties and made sure that we had a presence online, that's tech ops. So um, these are people who are really well connected in many ways to software developers and who are themselves developers and visionaries about open source software. Some of the original developers are still involved in helping to tweak different aspects of the website and we definitely need more developers to step up and join the ranks of the people who are still around. Um, like all of the working groups and affinity groups of Occupy Wall Street and um, teams like OccupyWallStreet.net, uh, dozens of people with immense talent came together to produce the foundations of this site, and now we need more people to step up to replace some of those people. For quite a long time, I would say back in the 90s, the, the essence of the counter-globalization movement that I got involved in when I was a kid um, was all about recognizing that the media is not going to tell the story the way it actually happens on the ground and that it's up to us to generate our own telling of the story and that we now have access to many tools that weren't available to our parents' generation and to any other generation prior and it's our responsibility to learn how to use these tools and then to just tell our story extremely well and to tell it professionally and to disseminate the story widely. So that's something that we knew back in the 90s and we started to develop kind of effective templates for telling our story. And then that somehow that knowledge got lost for a few years and luckily the younger generation that started Occupy Wall Street got really excited about doing it all over again. And those of us who had been doing it all along throughout the 90s as media activists were ready and present and ready, like available to plug in to basically what was a 20 to 25 year old movement um, of people who really were fed up with the really, really shallow um, narratives that they were seeing displayed on the streets and, or not on the streets, on the airwaves and Fundamentally, what it came, what this is all about is Occupy Wall Street called out an elephant in the room. There were, you know, there were, t there were absolute taboos around talking about economic inequality one year ago. Um, there were taboos around talking about debt one year ago. All of the talk was around austerity and cutting programs. And because we told our own story with conviction and courage um, over and over and over again, repeat, 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 no, the story is not that we need to cut programs. The story is that we need to address the sources of inequality. Um, we eventually had got the attention of the media. Staying true to course in the context of Occupy Wall Street news gathering is telling the stories of real people and believing in telling the stories of real people. And so 
what we quality for us means being really really careful not to get off that track and really um, going to the the people who are hardest hit by and at the far, at the front lines of the economic crisis and people who are also most aware of the global crisis that we're in climate change etc um, and and allowing them to speak for themselves so quality means knowing how to ask those people the proper questions and eliciting narratives from them and then knowing how to present those stories in, in a way that's true to their original message. Content comes from, certainly from very active people in Occupy Wall Street, it comes from philosophers in Occupy Wall Street, it comes from uh, the people who spend their time writing, you know. Um, there are some of us, I wish I could be writing this whole time, <laughs> like this whole you know, year-long process. I wish I could have been kind of like observing and analyzing and then re generating content. Um, some what? people, that became their role and they became absolutely invaluable to the rest of us. Um, and so we have some very, very proficient, very skilled writers within this movement. Um, so we draw upon them regularly and we republish their content from their blogs and highlight them and give them an opportunity to get more views. Um, and then we also have like people who you know go to actions and report on the actions and and um, you know tell the story from our perspective rather than allowing the media to tell the story for us. I think we could say in a year, it, the level we're at now, we can maintain that. Um, but certainly the ambitions are not to be where we are now, but to bring in more and more people. And there's no doubt that we need. We need more, um, a more diverse perspective within the team about what kinds of articles need to be published. Um, I, I would like us to go beyond what, within the movement, what's often, like the actions generally are around stop and frisk, um, student debt, and housing foreclosures. And now, like more focused on fracking, and it would be really nice to be able to push beyond that in our coverage, actually. And so if we had more people on the team, um, we could, potentially, you know, really, really blow up the site and cover more than those issues. When you work within the consensus process, um, you need to have convictions and you need to be flexible. Um, to have no opinions is not a contribution and neither is like to be unwilling to yield in a discussion. So that's one, that's a skill that um, some of us have who've worked within the consensus process for years and years. Um, that's one skill. Another skill is to be able to kind of like do, to take a step back from Occupy actually, and to see what resonates with average people and actually be able to kind of be, like take, have any sense of perspective on what actually matters to people outside of this activist circle. That's a skill also. And then there's the, a, a whole arena or a whole set of media skills that obviously we need. We need people who can write and people who can edit and people who know what good video and audio is and what that means is really, really not that subjective actually. <laughs> like once you have, a, you know, you know good writing when you read it, you know good audio when you hear it. It's, it's, it's writing and, and audio and, and visuals that have a rising and falling action that tell a story in a cogent way that, that respect the pe people's attention spans and how much work they have to do in their day and how much time they have to give to trying to like decipher the meaning within a particular piece. So that, that's something that takes years to um, develop and within the space of the OccupyWallStreet.net team we have some people who have been doing this for years and some people who are new and so it would require a certain level of humility you know like willingness to learn what this process is all about. I would like us to be a site that um, is reliable actually that's reliable and that is um, stimulating in a way that's not uh, stimulating just because it caters to the least common denominator and not just because it provokes in like the world we live in today people are only attracted to media sites in 80 percent of cases because they're provoked and i would like us to attract people because we inspire and um and we inspire people to action and that's our show for today 
Join us next week when we sit down with Jazz Hayden, Harlem activist and creator of the program Cop Watch. I'm James Green. And I'm Leah Mondragon. See you next week.